internets. Okay, one for Ed Randell. Do you stand by your assertion that we're a nation of wussies? What can we do to man up? Well, again, I think it's mostly about leadership. We need leaders who are going to tell oh, people... Oh, come on. That's a wussy answer. No, no. That is a wussy answer. I swear to God. No, you you think if we had a great leader, the character of the American people would suddenly change? No, I think it takes more than a great leader. I think we all have to start telling people the truth. And if we do that, it'll be easier for people to make tough, difficult decisions. And, and you know, it, it's a way of life, but it starts from the top. If we shy away from doing anything risky at the top, why should our people... Right, politicians just have to not care so much about keeping their job. Absolutely. It's not that great a job. <laughs> or maybe it is. Maybe it's just such a... That, it must be a great job. That must be it. They just... You know, McCain will be there at least 110. <laughs> They do not want to get... He used to be that kind of politician, and then he just utterly reversed himself, you know, in the last few years. But he used to be that way. Okay. Uh, should politicians have to take a test to prove that they're actually smart enough to govern? <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that one. <laughs> well, the, the fact that Michelle Bachman is on the Intelligence Committee is the, uh, is the most oxymoronic, uh, you know, <laughs> thing that we could it's possibly have in our society, you know. She's... Is she on the Intelligence Committee? Yeah. yeah that uh, is yes, she hard. is. It's pretty darn scary. Right. <laughs> where, would, where should we draw the line in terms of getting involved with unrest in uh, dictator-run Middle Eastern countries? Well, I don't know. We've got three going. I think we could do four. <laughs> The third war is the charm. <laughs> but you know, the thing is, there's, a, there's an undeclared war that's going on all throughout the Horn of Africa and, um, and in Oman and in Yemen, I mean, the, the targeted killing campaign we were talking about earlier. I mean, that's, that's been a war that's been brewing from 2002 on when Bush <clears throat> did a drone attack in Yemen and killed six people, including a U.S. citizen. The world is a battlefield. That's a doctrine that was developed by the neocons and doubled down on by Obama. Do you think America would be better off with a parliamentary system of government like Canada has? I do, actually. I mean, I love our system of government in general, but, you know, Thomas Jefferson himself said, you really have to uh, you look at this every 20 years. And uh, we have, uh, come on, we have a system that is just paralyzed. And it, it seems like if you have a system where you can vote out the leader without the party, as a parliamentary system can, right? I mean, you can have a no-confidence vote. I mean, couldn't we... I think we could retain some of the checks and balances that make our system great and also have that. The problem is you don't get Barack Obama, though I used to cover European politics, and they have the same six people leading the party decade after decade. Yeah. Whereas our party allows people to arise from nowhere and take over a party. So I actually like our... But only two better. parties. It just yeah, seems that... But David that... is absolutely right. In London, it's, in England, it's the same thing. You cannot get any new blood. <clears throat> you know, it really takes decades to get any new yeah. blood. Uh, I think our structure is okay. I think some of the rules we put in uh, suck. So, for example, 41 senators representing 17 percent of the American right. people can stop something from coming into law. That rule ought to go and it ought to go tomorrow. Yes. Tomorrow. Right. But then in, in, in Italy... <laughs> In Italy, you actually have Silvio Berlusconi's mistresses have to be elected. It's incredible. <laughs> Bunga there. Bunga. Bunga Bunga, <laughs> where he learned from Mama Gaddafi. Don't exactly. forget, that's where he learned his Bunga Bunga. Right. <laughs> that's why he doesn't want to bomb them. How is the independence of the U.S. judiciary really secured when the appointment process is so political and lower judges actively campaign for office? This is something the world thinks is insane, and I agree with them, that we have judges who have to run for office. This is supposed to be the one branch of government, you know, that is not... <laughs> subject to the mob and the masses and the voting, and we don't do it. Certainly true. It's one of the reasons they all fail that civics test, you know? It's just too, too many elections, too many layers. It's too complicated. I think it is, in fact, extremely difficult to understand the American civic system. Right. And, of the course, when, you, when you're talking outside. about judges, that's when people... That's when the real bloodthirsty hillbillies come out of the woodwork. <laughs> because that's the guy who passes down the laws and punishes people, and we got to throw people in prison, and that's why we have... Don't we have more people? per capita in prison than any other country in the world? Somehow we're the best people in the world, but we put the most in prison. Seems crazy. All right. How much clearer could Obama possibly be about our objectives in Libya? He spelled it out for us pretty much. In, I, I asked that question, fool. <laughs> Asking questions. All right. We're done with the questions. We're done. Thank you, panel. Thank you, audience. We will see you next week.